Our, our next uh, speaker is, for our, this lightning talk, you will hear from Love Lundy, who is a senior at Spelman College for about three more weeks, right, Love? And so please join me on stage. Give her a round of applause, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us, Love. So my question for you is, can you talk about your identity as a food studies scholar? Yes. Thank you. Good afternoon, and thank you, Danny, for that question. Before I begin, I would like to extend my deepest gratitude to the Spelman Food Studies Program, the 2022 pilot cohort of scholars, and my friends and family supporting me in person and online today. I would also like to dedicate a moment to the genocides and horrors occurring in the Democratic Republic of the Congo, Sudan, Ethiopia, Haiti, and Palestine. In all those instances, food is weaponized. The private and public sectors and community-based organizations here in Atlanta need to quickly collate to provide aid to the displaced and to end federal investment in genocide. I stand in solidarity with the protests led by the student activists from the Atlanta University Center, which align with the history of our esteemed champ campuses. Finally, Stop Cop City is a social, environmental, and food justice issue. My name is Love Lundy. I am a senior political science major, food studies minor from Edgewater, New Jersey, and Triana, Alabama, two small but mighty towns outside New York City in Huntsville. At Spelman College, I humbly serve as the director of the Blue Record podcast and the seminar development and community service Com committee chairs of the exceptional Epsilon Eta chapter of Sigma Gamma Rho Sorority Incorporated. My journey in food studies began during my sophomore year when I was accepted into the food studies program. This meant I was required to complete monthly garden service hours, attend programming, and finish the minor. The minor requires a food and culture nexus course, a semester of independent study, and one class in the humanities, social, and natural sciences. Finally, I felt some familiarity with other students. I had been invited to develop my interests into scholarly pursuits, something tangible and capable of change. Black food geographies, food justice movements, and intro to African American herbalism are the names of courses on my transcript. In those classes, I could interface with some preliminary questions that shaped my interest in food, agriculture, and land. What was my family and community's role in influencing my food habits, for example? What is food apartheid, and how does it impact the self-care of chronically ill people? I was diagnosed with type 1 diabetes at the age of 17, and I basically took making it a personality trait way too seriously. Why is the work of black herbalists and food workers being shadow banned on social media, and how did white women become the authority on herbal practices? I was interested in understanding the relationship between the cannabis industry, incarceration, and land. The predominantly white legal cannabis industry made upward of $20 billion in 2022. Yet the carceral system received an influx of a quarter million, mostly black and brown convicts for marijuana possession and sales in the same year. Among this internal line of questioning, the recent passing of my green thumb, Uncle, Free, Uncle Freddie Lee Lundy, and grandmother Emma Lou Fletcher had me questioning my purpose in life. The program is interdisciplinary, and so are my thoughts. As soon as the prospect of food studies entered my purview, I understood that I was destined for this course of study. My time as a food studies scholar has shaped my Spelman experience. I've been privileged to travel to culture-rich places like Sapelo Island and Dakar, Senegal. I've developed research, and shout out to Maurice, I know he's here today. I've de developed research skills at the University of California, Berkeley. I've traveled to farms like the University of Georgia's U Garden and earned a certification in agroecology from Agroecology Commons Bay Area Farm to Farmer Training Program by taking virtual classes and traveling to farms all over California. I've proudly led my sorority in food-focused service, such as time in the Victory Garden or packaging food boxes with Urban Recipe. I've created innovative tea blends. I've set goals for myself and achieved them, namely shadowing under the esteemed Tambra Ray Stevenson of Wanda. I've over come anxieties and grown beautiful food and herbs in that sacred garden space behind Harriet E. Giles Hall, servicing the student body in the Lowry Institute's Mimi's Pantry. Most importantly, I've affirmed and reaffirmed my belief that I was made to serve the dirt. As I approach the end of my food studies coursework here at Spelman, new questions boggle my mind. How can I justify working in food justice movements that promote rather than implement solutions to approach food sovereignty as they simultaneously supply genocidal entities with weapons and money? How can I, as a consumer, influence the pharmaceutical, medical, and food industries to rethink the way that they do business? Should we include practices of agroecology, herbalism, and slow food? 
Can we promote the growth of local minority-owned businesses? Can we understand the impact of culturally relevant programming? Black and brown bodies are forcibly removed from their families and imprisoned, forced to participate in slave labor, which produces foods that their own families inevitably consume on the outside. What is the best way to approach food justice in these communities? Public policy school is the next step for me. I want to focus on black southern foodways because America has a habit of forgetting to give credit where it's due. I'm interested in domestic food policy because an intentional amount of attention can empower food sovereign communities to run for us by us. I'm ecstatic to delve into all food, agriculture, and land policy land issues, and I really want to know more about the intersection of disability and food policy. I'm interested in public policy school because I'm capable of crafting creative solutions to these questions, solutions that transition into programs that stimulate the economic and social growth of these communities. One day, I will open agriculture and self-care focused community centers in rural black southern communities, which I've dreamt about since the beginning of this journey. I know that I cannot save the world by myself, but in choosing Spelman, I committed to a choice to change the world, and the food studies program has shown me so many ways to get started. Thank you. Nice job. You're okay. That was great. Woo! I want to thank Love and Sabrina for sharing their exciting work. It's incredibly inspiring to me that this ge next generation of change makers is leading the way. I'm learning from them every day and so honored to work with so many young people. So a, a bigger a round of applause for them again, please.